What's going on? Brian Tong here, and this is my review for TCL's QM8 flagship 4K Ultra HD mini LED TV behind me. And I'm setting up a little closer to you right now, but let me get back here, back here because this is the 85 inch version of the QM8 that goes up to even 98 inches and it was so big that I had to get it set up in my garage and I'm all mounted it here. So it's a big screen that I can have playing in the background during my workouts since I've transformed half of this space into a gym during pandemic or I can even do workouts directly on the TV itself. And TCL's approach has been bigger and better with unrivaled value. So we're gonna break down what stands out about this TV. Now this is a mini LED TV and TCL was the first to introduce mini LED TV technology to the US. The difference with mini LED is that the LEDs used for the backlight are smaller in size. They are mini and that allows the images you see to have improved backlight control, reduced backlight bleeding or that halo effect. You don't see that anymore and deeper blacks because in the past backlit TVs would have somewhere around 200 or so dimming zones. Well, the QM8 has up to 2000 300 dimming zones, that's a whole lot, so it allows it to have a lot more image control. And mini LED has gone so good that it's just, it's just a step under what OLED TVs are capable of, which are still the top of the line for image quality, but they're also more expensive, and you're jumping up you know, another price level for that OLED display, so whenever someone is looking for a TV, I'm always gonna point them to a mini LED TV first. Now TCL, they sent this monster, this QM8, out to me for this specific review and I purchased the very first TCL TV that they ever released in the US. This was years ago, I think it was back in 2014. Plus, I have multiple family members who are set up with TCL TVs today. Now, I already talked about how big the QM8 is. Again, this is 85, it goes up to 98 inches, but it's also one of the brightest, if not the brightest on the market with up to 2000 nits of peak brightness and that is pretty insane, but why does that matter? Well, if you're in a bright area or a bright room with a lot of natural light, which is most people's living room, that brightness makes a huge difference. And this TV, you know, many TVs look great in a dark room where you can control the light. This is, you could say that for almost every TV, but that's not normal for most of us. And you can see here, image quality is great. And I'm just showing you what it can do in a normal lighting situation. And when the lights go dark, um, yeah, that looks incredible as well. It also supports all the high dynamic range formats you expect with HDR Ultra, Dolby Vision IQ, HDR10+, HDR10, and HLG. So there's nothing missing there. It has all the flavors. This TV also is a 120 hertz refresh rate. So gamers, you're good, right? And it also bumps up to 144 hertz variable refresh rate for gaming with auto low latency support as well. Because if you're getting a big TV like this, right? Like I'm pretty sure that you're gonna be gaming on it. You know, I have this set up with a PS5 Slim and the first time I plugged it in, it detected the game console and then turned on its auto game mode, which optimized the TV specifically for when you're gaming. Now you can also access their game master overlay. It's basically a game bar and that's to change some of those settings on the fly directly on the remote and this is a staple feature that we're seeing on a lot of high-end TVs and gaming this is where it excels now there's also a mode called game accelerator 240 that can push things to a 240 hertz variable refresh rate but it only displays at a 1080p resolution but the more important one for me is 4k at 144 hertz variable refresh rate that's here but gaming on this, it looks very detailed, it looks very clean, and the image quality is really punchy. It's one of the areas where this TV clearly excels. Now design-wise, this is a very clean and minimal design with a bezel that is, you know, it's not the thinnest compared to others, but it's still good at one centimeter thick. And then you also have this uh, plastic body, right? This is, you know, a sturdy, solid beefcake. And then you got some details on the back up here at the top is an integrated subwoofer and the sound on this TV is solid, but I did find that I got better results with a dedicated soundbar that I put here on the bottom. I also prefer a soundbar or any sound system over any TV's internal speakers, but they were still very good. The subwoofer definitely gives it a little extra oomph compared to other TVs and it's the big thing is though, it's just not what my personal preference is. I like having a sound system. 
Now, most people put their TV on a stand, uh, but I obviously went and did a major wall mount. So let's take a look at the back and all of the QM8's ports. Now, you'll have to ignore how a uh, little messy and cluttered it is on the back, but everything is all connected here to make it look super clean when you're viewing it head on. Now, for its ports, it has a total of four HDMI ports, two HDMI 2.1 ports, that's gonna be on port one and port two. HDMI port one supports 4K at the 144 hertz, while port two supports 4K at 120 hertz. Ports three and four are HDMI 2.0 and port four has eARC, so that's where I have my soundbar connected. For over-the-air broadcasts, if you're doing that, it does not support ATSC 3.0, so over-the-air broadcasts are limited to 1080p. That's something you might wanna know. And this TV is using version 11 of Google's TV interface, and it is easy to use. It finds content, it has pretty good recommendations. I mean, these all matter and make sense to me, and I think, you know, it has every app you can really think of. It's here from YouTube TV to YouTube, you got Disney Plus, Netflix, Max, all of them, Hulu, the one, all the ones that matter, they're here. Now, I did come from the original TCL days of using the Roku TV interface, but Google's, it feels more modern, you can do more, even doing voice queries for random information works here because it's plugged into the Google Assistant. Hey Google, when do the Warriors play next? I would say though the remote, it has maybe a little too much going on. This is not a deal breaker, but there's a lot of buttons to fiddle with. Um, I do like the quick access to some of the apps I regularly use, but you can see uh, there's a lot going on. They could have stripped it down a little bit, but if there was one thing, one thing that I would say that might be the biggest drawback here is that the viewing angle is not as good as other TVs. Like this is a big boy at 85 inches, but once you get past this uh, like 45 degree angle, it becomes harder to really see uh, the image clearly and you can get that shadowy side angle that you see. Part of it is its display technology because OLED just has a ridiculous viewing angle. But that would probably be its biggest drawback. Again, not a deal breaker, but if you have a large group that is surrounding this TV from all angles, uh, you may not get the best view from the side side, but I'm always dead center when I'm using it, so this doesn't affect me. Now this TV is really, let's be honest, it's a luxury. Like I can have a game on while I'm working out in my gym on the other side of the garage, you know, getting those gains, burning off those holiday pounds. Uh, this is like a, a, a safe, you know, safe space for me. And then also I have an Apple TV 4K directly mounted onto the back of the TV. It's stuck on there and I can do fitness plus workouts on the big screen, which is really nice as well. So this serves a lot of purposes. And you know, I can get away and come out here to game on the biggest TV I've ever had. Like I can't complain. This is a real luxury and just having any screen this size as we, you know, consumers are getting bigger screens, better image quality, this fits right in that. So the QM8 really stands out and excels with its 2000 nits brightness and showcases excellent ACR content, whether it's watching the latest movie, like I checked out, what, was it Rebel Moon? And you could see where there's dark parts, but then some of those highlights, those lights in the background, they just pop really great. That's HDR in action. Also, when you're gaming, you see a lot of these visual and particle effects that just pop off the screen. This is all here. Now it does still have some blooming, not too much, but you only really see it if it's something like a complete black background and then a white logo appears. Um, it's not horrible. And mini LED tech has come a long way and the blooming effect is just not even remotely as bad as it used to be with older display tech. Now overall, this TV does a very, very good job with all of its dimming zones and then it brings out some of the best image quality that you'll find with the mini LED TV period. So if you're someone who's looking for the biggest TV, right? I'm gonna come all the way back here. Look, 85, my arms can't even reach the sides. So if you want that, the biggest TV that you can get with great image quality and great value, the QM8 is really the one to get. Now the QM8 comes in a 65 inch, 75 inch, 85 inch, which is this one, and then a 98 inch behemoth. And TCL has some special pricing that's unheard of before the end of the year that you can take advantage of. So an 85 inch TV like this one behind me is normally $2,999, but it's available for $1,799. And then you can see the other pricing for the lineup as well. Like that 98 inch started, started at $11,999 and is now 
5,999 before the end of the year. And if you're watching this later, you know, there are always great prices for TVs towards the end of January around Super Bowl time. So keep your eyes open. Like this is always the best time of the year to TV shop. So there you go. But look right behind me, right? The QM8, excellent picture quality for its price and size. And T-Sale has always been that sweet spot for value and quality and continues that trend with the QM8.